good brother of mine to be the uh, speaker for today. Mr. Dallas Jones, a political commentator and community activist who currently serves as the president and CEO of Elite Change and managing principal of Jones Group International. After over 10 years of working politically at the local, state, and federal levels of public policy on campaigns in 2016, Mr. Jones embarked on a journey of form Jones Group International, which recognized the importance of addressing fundamental social and economic development problems in some of the most vulnerable populations across the world. Prior to forming the lead change, Mr. Jones worked on every level of government, including a special assistant to U.S. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, and for our Texas representative, Garnet Coleman, as a policy analyst and later district director. He also served as district director for Texas Senator Ryan Ellis. Mr. Jones has been a recipient of numerous awards as a, uh, a name the NAACP at the Congress Black Caucus Annual Legislative Summit, named Mr. Jones as one of the 40, 40 power leaders under 40 in the national, and also the national speaker and trainer. Mr. Jones is also a well-known commentator on television and radio, regularly appearing as political analyst on U.S. Fox affiliate channel. His works have been published in a number of publications across the country around the areas of the African-American engagement, economic development, and education reform. Mr. Jones is very active in the community where he serves as first vice president of the Houston NAACP, vice chair of the Fourth Ward Redevelopment Authority, and commissioner of the, of the Houston Land Assemblage and Redevelopment Authority. He's also a member of the American Association of Political Analysts, and also a member of the 100 Black Men of Metropolitan Houston, and also my brother of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. He's a graduate of the Leadership Houston Class 30, and the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University Global Emerging Leaders Program. He resides in Houston, Texas, here with his lovely wife, Dr. Angela Jones, and their beautiful daughter, Zoe. I, bring, I present to some and present to others. Please stand on your feet at this time and welcome Mr. Dallas Jones. Just come in to San Houston State from Killeen, 
Uh, he was a freshman. He, I was a senior. I think I was, uh, well, I'll leave that there. But I was a senior. Um, and he was definitely uh, one of the, the, the guys that me and another group of guys took in as, 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 as a mentee. And it is just amazing to see him giving back and doing good work. And that's Mr. Terrence Daniels, who is also one of my proud brothers from out of the So um, thank you as well. It's good to see you doing great things and, and, and really carrying out the, the mantra of our university, which is the measure of our life is in its service. So I, I thank you for that. To the teachers, to the teachers that toil daily in the vineyard um, to educate these children, your work is the utmost important in shaping the future of not only these children's lives, but in the future of our country. Um, it is not very often that I get behind a microphone and um, I am not political in my speech. Um, I, I tried really hard to be apolitical today, and I will be. Um, but it is important to uh, the future of our country, um, the work that you do. And frankly, you aren't paid enough. Uh, you aren't given the accolades that you so deserve. And at this moment, I, I want to say thank you to the teachers and all the faculty that help to educate the minds of tomorrow and move America forward. And finally, to the most important part of this puzzle, the parents. It is you who daily have to reinforce the lessons that are being taught here at Boston. It is you that has to shape the mind, the hope, and the dreams of the children that stand before me, of your children, of our community's children. And your work does not go unnoticed because this day is here and here your children sit as they get ready to move to the next level of life. You should give yourselves a round of applause. I think that's all of my acknowledgments. Let me also acknowledge my good friend and client, uh, for this area, District 9, the Honorable Wanda Adams, in her absence, for her tireless work on the HISD School Board of Trustees. Not the easiest job in the world these days, but she does it for no pay, so I do want to recognize her, but she would kill me if I didn't do that. And I think there's a lot of cameras in the scene, so I uh, definitely want to give her a shout out. So I've got some good news. I'm not going to be standing here wrong um, because I think anything that I can say I want to make sure this microphone is anything that I can say is being said in your presence here today but if you'll journey with me if you'll journey with me for a second and indulge me for a bit there are a few things I would like to offer to you the eighth grade class of Boston Middle School, the graduating class of 2023. And I think the AV department's gonna help me out here with this. Um, I remember one Christmas when I was a child. There was only one thing that I wanted. The year was 1988. And the hottest thing on the market at the time was this new product from a company called Nintendo. Nintendo, number eight, y'all Nintendo. Nintendo. Okay. Now, I know I'm probably dating myself here, and some of you have never seen or heard of the all-time classic Nintendo Entertainment System, but I'm quite sure that many if not most of your teachers know exactly what I'm talking about. This was the end all be all of video game systems. A new mothership that was coming in for a landing and I had to have it. 
The class of Nintendo Entertainment System came with two remote controls to maximize play, and it came with the light ray gun, as you can see, picture below it, and the only one game cartridge in the box. The cartridge contained two games. One was the cons, which is what the light ray gun was used. Ducks would simply fly across the screen, next slide, and you would point the gun, pull the trigger, and blast them out of the sky as your pixelated bloodhound, displayed here, next slide, as your pixelated bloodhound would run and fetch your kill of the day. Pretty simple. The goal was to see how many ducks you could kill and to move on to and it was entertaining. But it got a lot less complicated once you realized that all you had to do was get close to the television, put the gun on the screen, and follow the ducks until you shot them down. A shameless shortcut, I must admit. But really, we only wanted to see what was the highest level we could get to. But the master game. An anchor of the cops was none other than the greatest game of all time. Well, at least in my time. Super Mario Bros. <laughs> Story none other than Mario in his red overalls and Luigi in his green overalls. I think you can see him there. There we go. These boys got to know the original Mario and Luigi. The Pizza Making Brothers would soon consume much of me and my friend's time as we tried to maneuver through the complicated maze of and tunnels uh, and bricks that were broken with their hands, all while trying to avoid, as you can see on the next slide, killer cabbages that were trying to attack you. And of course, you can't forget about the killer ducks that you have to jump on their hands and push them into everything. It 
It took a lot of time. It took a lot of attention and a lot of mastery to make it to the fourth level of the eighth world and defeat King Kuta. The reason I tell this story is not because I'm a video game fanatic, which I am not. It's because today we celebrate you. As you have reached the fourth level of the eighth world, you have beat the killer cabbages, you have maneuvered through the tunnels, you have defeated King Koopa, and you have reached the end of Mario's world. You have worked hard. You have studied long. You have sharpened your educational experience by participation in extracurricular like sports and theater and music, chess, debate, and a host of other clubs and organizations that you may have here at Boston. You have avoided getting suspended and even worse, the biggie expulsion. Well, some of you did anyway. But most importantly, you did not give up. You never quit through all of your challenges, some of which you will shortly in the future realize is not the biggest challenges you will have to face in your life. But you pushed through and made it to the end of your middle school career, moving forward to high school, which will strap you into the rest of your lives. You have much to celebrate and even more to be proud of. I wish I could tell you this is the best day of your life thus far. Truth is, I can't. I can't tell you that because I've been lying to you. Your best days are ahead. But much like our friends, the Super Mario Brothers, you will have to continue to conquer the obstacles that are thrown before you. What I didn't know when I left middle school was the rest of my life started upon entering high school. It was there that my GPA started to matter from the first class I took to the last, which would in turn determine which college I went to, which would then determine what career I was to have, and ultimately the amount of money I would make and the life that I would come to live. You see, as I mentioned earlier, once you reach the end of Super Mario's world and conquer the fourth level of the eighth world, then you would start the game over and attempt to do the same thing the next day. This is where you are at this moment. It is time for you to start over. Take the summer to prepare yourselves for what is to come in the fall as you enter into a new world and a new part of your life journey. You see, after the original Super Mario Brothers, they also came out with Super Mario Brothers 2, and then Super Mario Brothers 3, and then a whole bunch of other variations. After that, the game was recreated over and over again, but the challenges remained the same. The challenge was to make it to the end of Super Mario's world. Some of the biggest mistakes we make as young people, and I say we because I, I'm actually still pretty young, and even more so young at heart, but, but allow me to share just a couple of the biggest mistakes that we make, and I will take my seat. The first mistake would be thinking that we have time. Let me give you some advice, 2023. You don't have time. Tomorrow starts today. Take advantage of your time in high school with your eyes focused on your future. Some of you will go to college. Some of you will go on to military service or the workforce. But whatever you do, make sure that you take advantage of the time that you have been given on this earth and dedicate your life to making that time worth something. Mistakes, thinking that we know everything. One of the first lessons I learned in my professional career was from a mentor who told me simply, you don't know what you don't know. The great philosopher Socrates 
he said, all I know is that I know nothing. Use your time to learn those things that you don't know. Seek out those things that you don't know so that you may come to know them. Learning never stops. In life, you will learn a new lesson daily if you are focused enough to see the lesson. Some of the lessons will be easy and others will be quite hard. But always, always, always remember, there's a lesson to be learned in everything and from the experience of those that have paved the way for us. Thirdly, we come to believe that failure is the end. Be afraid to fail. Sometimes we learn our greatest lessons from our failures. The universe will always send us a reminder of its chaos and its power. Do your best at everything you set yourselves to do. Failure is unacceptable when we don't do our best to succeed. But the person that is willing to shoot at the target and miss has more courage than the person that wasn't willing to take the shot. Your failures are simply tunnels in your path to reach the end of the level. And finally, we make the mistake of not thinking beyond what we can see. We often get caught as young people in the mind that we can't attain or achieve more than what is around us. That we are limited in opportunities simply because we have never seen or experienced things before. The truth of the matter is that there is a world out there waiting for you to be the next great inventor, athlete, thinker, artist, engineer, doctor, lawyer. The world is waiting on you. I'm reminded of the words about about 44th President Barack Obama, who, who stated that we are the ones that we've been waiting on. Where we stand today as a world is the result of people that were not afraid to dream and push things beyond what they could see. We continue to try to rescue the princess. Thirty-two times. Thirty-two times in Super Mario Brothers did we try to rescue this princess. Only for us to realize that the thirty-second time would be the time we would finally achieve our goal, even when it seemed hopeless. These are only some of the challenges and mistakes that we make on our paths to greatness. But I tell you, there is no challenge that you will face that is insurmountable as you journey through the gift the gift we call life. So to you, the eighth grade class of Lawson High School, we're in the Madison Theater Pattern, the Madison High School graduating class 2023, or whatever high school you may end up at. Today, I salute you for your accomplishment of making it to the end of this world. I look forward to seeing you in the next world. And I am excited about what you will do to change our world. God bless you all. So, Dallas Jones, uh, first of all, let's give another round of applause. On behalf of Law School Middle School, we'd like to present you with this award in states. In appreciation, presented to Dallas Jones for his invaluable service as guest speaker for the 8th grade promotional exercise, Law School Middle School 2019. Thank you, Dallas.